Hola. Did you know that about 470 million people speak Spanish as their native language? and at least 20 million people are studying Spanish as a foreign language? That's a lot of Spanish speakers. But despite the huge numbers of speakers, the Spanish language still holds some secrets. This video is going to show you the workings of an aspect of Spanish that occurs frequently, but is not well known. Let's start with some Spanish words. How many sentences in Spanish can you make with this set of words? Even if you know a little Spanish, you can try to do this. Let's see how you did. You probably have made two sentences like this. El perro dormía en el jardín. The dog was sleeping in the garden. La madre canta. The mother sings. Did you also make these alternatives? Dormía el perro en el jardín. Canta la madre. The two versions of each sentence have the same meaning, but their word orders are different. In the first version, the subject, el perro, or la madre, came first, in front of the verb dormía or canta. But in the second version, the verbs dormía and canta come first, and the subject, perro and madre, followed. If you're an English speaker, you'll find the subject-verb word order in the first sentence is very familiar, since that's the order of subjects in verbs in English too. But the verb subject word order will seem more exotic. But verb subject order is very common in Spanish, in any form of text and in speech. This isn't a secret though. The little known part of the story lies in the answer to a question you might already be thinking about. Which word order do you use when? The answer to this question has two parts, both of which come out of linguistic analysis of Spanish. The first part is not so technical, but the second part gets trickier. Let's start with the not-so-technical, which concerns the idea of prominence or focus in the discourse. We'll use the intransitive verb llorar, to cry, to illustrate this. So let's imagine that there is a child who was crying all last night. In theory, then, we could say, un niño estuvo llorando, or estuvo llorando un niño. The decision about which word order to use depends on whether, in the given context, it's the event of crying or the person who was crying that is prominent. If the event of crying needs to be prominent, then the subject-verb order is the most natural. If the person who is crying needs to be prominent or focused, the verb-subject order is the most natural. In other words, the part of the sentence that is focused in the discourse comes later in the sentence. Since all of this depends on context, then for our example of the child crying, we need some context in order to know which word order to use. So imagine a situation where you were in bed trying to sleep, but you couldn't because a child was crying nearby all through the night. The next day, your friend sees you looking rough after not getting enough sleep and asks, ¿Qué pasó? What happened? To answer, you need to talk about the thing that happened. In other words, the event. So you use the subject verb word order, which puts the event of crying in the focus position at the end of the sentence. Un niño estuvo llorando toda la noche. Now, imagine a slightly different situation where you are walking home and near your house you see a child fall over and starts to cry. You move to help, but his mother gets there first and soon he stops crying. You go into your house and your friend who heard the crying asks, ¿Quién lloró? This time, you need to talk about the person who was crying in order to answer the question, so you use the verb subject order, which puts the person who was crying in the focus position at the end of the sentence, lloró un niño. So far so good, right? If the question is, ¿Qué pasó? or what happened, then the answer makes the event prominent by putting the event which is the part of the sentence containing the verb near the end of the sentence. The result is subject, verb, word order. But if the question is, ¿Quién estornudó o gritó? or who sneezed or shouted, then the answer makes the person who did the action prominent by putting the subject near the end of the sentence. The result is verb, subject, word order. Of course, different elements of speech can be prominent or focused in the discourse, even without a question to provide the context. 
We've contrasted the what happened question with the who question, just as one illustration of how differences in focus arise. So now we come to the more technical bit. We've looked so far at a few intransitive verbs. The story's the same with transitive verbs, which have an object as well as a subject. But there's a subset of intransitive verbs that behaves differently. The subset includes a lot of motion verbs, such as venir, to come, entrar, to enter, and salir, to leave. What differs about these verbs is that they don't like the subject verb word order at all. For example, imagine a party at your friend's house with music playing very loud. A neighbor comes to us to turn the music down. Your friend is outside while the neighbor is there, so isn't aware of the visit. When your friend comes back, she asks, ¿Qué pasó? You answer, vino un vecino. A neighbor came. Using verb subject word order. Or she asks, ¿Quién vino? Your answer again is vino un vecino. With these verbs, verb subject order is always preferred regardless of the focus. How can a learner know which verbs fall into this subset? Well, the good news is you may already know intuitively because this set of verbs occurs cross-linguistically, although we don't always find that they affect word order in the way that we've seen in Spanish. The verbs are known as unaccusative verbs in linguistics, and they include many of the most common motion verbs, as well as verbs that indicate a change of state, such as appear, fall, or melt. They're defined by a semantic property of their subjects, specifically and rather technically. The subject of an unaccusative verb is not the agent of the verb, it's the thing that in some sense is affected by the verb. Unaccusative verbs show a range of different behaviors depending on the language. If you know German or French, these are the verbs that form the perfect tense with the auxiliary be, while other verbs use the auxiliary have. And if you know any Shakespearean English, then you'll know that at that time, these verbs formed the perfect tense with be in English too, although modern English uses have. Another place where an accusative verbs stand out in English is in fairy tales, because they are the verbs that often follow there. And we can find further examples in other languages, including Japanese and Chinese. But we need to get back to Spanish. So this is what we have so far. When the event is focused in the discourse, then the part of the sentence that contains the verb goes near the end of the sentence. Except when the verb is an unaccusative verb. And when the subject is focused in the discourse, then the subject goes near the end, regardless of what kind of verb it is. Well, that's our secret. Was this new to you, or do you already know about this? If you're a Spanish teacher, have you ever taught any of this? To our knowledge, this doesn't come up in any textbooks, and we're not saying that it should, but we wonder what learners of Spanish and teachers of Spanish think. Is it useful to know about the link between discourse prominence and word order? Should we teach it? And if so, how? Tell us what you think. Hasta luego!